Hello everyone and welcome back to the set 2 of non-deterministic context free grammars solve problems. In this session we will observe couple of more solve problems. So without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the outcome of today's session, today we will observe three solved examples on left factoring. Consider the first example. S can be rewritten as a S S B S or A S A S B or A B B or just B. So if we consider the non terminal S as our generic non terminal A, observe the production rules. In these three, these A's are the common prefix or the alphas. Therefore, this S S B S would be beta 1. Then this S A S B would be beta 2 and finally B B is going to be beta 3. Now we need to convert this grammar into this form. So let's begin. From the start symbol S, we will produce the alpha that is the common prefix followed by a new non terminal. So S can be rewritten as A that is the alpha followed by say S prime. This is the newly created non terminal. Now from S prime, we are going to derive the betas. So S prime can be rewritten as S S B S that is beta 1, then beta 2 that is S A S B, finally B B that is beta 3. Now from S, B can also be derived. So the rule S can be rewritten as B should also be here. So S is now free from non determinism. Nonetheless, S prime is not. Observe, if we consider S prime as the non terminal A, then in case of these two productions, both of them have S as the common prefix or alpha. That makes SBS beta 1 and this ASB beta 2. Let's factor out the common prefixes. Basically, we need to convert this production into this form. So, S prime can be rewritten as S that is alpha followed by S double prime that is the new variable which in turn can be rewritten as SBS that is beta 1 or beta 2 that is ASB. Now we should not forget about the production S prime can be rewritten as BB so it will also be included. So the complete set of the deterministic CFG is S can be rewritten as a s prime or b s prime can be written as s s double prime or b b finally s double prime can be written as s b s or a s b so basically in order to eliminate non determinism we need to keep performing left factoring until there are no common prefixes in any of the productions let's now move on to the next example Observe the grammar. S can be rewritten as B S S A A S or B S S A S B or B S B or just A. Can you figure out the common prefixes or alphas? Go ahead, try to figure out pausing the video for a moment. So if we consider this S as the generic non terminal A, then judging these three production rules, we can state that these B followed by S are the common prefixes. Therefore, this S A A S would be beta 1. Then S A S B would be beta 2. And finally, this B would be beta 3. Let's now convert it to this form. So, S can be rewritten as the common prefix B S followed by a new non terminal say S prime. Then S prime can be rewritten as this beta 1 that is S A A S or S A S B that is beta 2 or beta 3 that is just B. Now, S can also derive A, so we will include that rule. S can be rewritten as just A. Now look at S prime. If we consider it as the non terminal A, then look at these two. Clearly, these S A are the alphas. Hence, this A S 
would be beta 1 and SB would be beta 2. So, the modified production rules are going to be S prime can be rewritten as SA, that is the common prefix, followed by the new non terminal, say S double prime. Now, S double prime will generate the betas. So, S double prime can be rewritten as AS or SB. Now, S prime can also derive B. So, let's include that rule too. So, the entire set of deterministic CFGs would be S can be rewritten as BS followed by S prime or A. S prime can be rewritten as SA followed by S double prime or just B. Finally, S double prime can be rewritten as AS or SB. In this set, we have eliminated all the non determinism. Let's now move on to the final example. Observe this grammar. S can either be rewritten as A or AB or ABC or ABCD. If we consider that S is the generic non terminal A, then the common prefixes or alphas in here are these A's in all four productions. Now, this A can actually be represented as A followed by epsilon. So, the respective betas are this epsilon is the beta 1, then this B is the beta 2, this BC is beta 3, and this BCD is beta 4. Let's perform left factoring. So, S can be rewritten as A, that is alpha, followed by a new non terminal, say S prime. Now, S prime will generate the betas. So, S prime can be rewritten as either epsilon or B, that is this B or BC or BCD. Now, there is no non determinism in the productions of S. However, that's not the case for S prime. Let me rearrange the productions real quick. Can you figure out the common prefixes? So, if we consider S prime as the non terminal A, then in these three productions, observe closely, these B's are the alphas. So, clearly, this epsilon is the beta 1, this C is beta 2, and this CD is beta 3. Let's factor out the common prefixes. So, S prime can be rewritten as B. That is the alpha followed by say S double prime. The S double prime can be written as either epsilon or C or CD. Also, S prime can be written as epsilon, so we will include that too. So, this is what the productions have come down to, but it's not really over. Let me rearrange the productions of S double prime. See, if we consider S double prime as the non terminal A, then from these two productions, the C's are the alphas. Now, this epsilon would be the beta 1 and this D would be the beta 2. Now, let's proceed with the left factoring procedure. So, S double prime can be rewritten as C, that is the common prefix, followed by say S triple prime and S triple prime can be rewritten as either epsilon, that is the beta 1, then beta 2, that is D. We also need to include the rule S double prime can be written as epsilon as S double prime can actually derive epsilon 2. So, the entire set becomes S can be written as A followed by S prime. S prime can be written as B followed by S double prime or epsilon. S double prime can be written as C followed by S triple prime or epsilon. Finally, S triple prime can be rewritten as D or epsilon. Now, this is the deterministic version of this non deterministic grammar. Do remember that we need to keep on performing left factoring until all the productions are free from non determinism. So, in this session, we observed three solved examples on left factoring. Alright, people, that will be all for this session. With these many solved examples, I believe now you have gained the crystal clear concept of left factoring. With this session, we have come to the end of our second chapter.
So I hope to see you in the next chapter. Thank you all for watching.